And now here's Ron Redden with sports. Coming up in sports, we have high school football highlights from State College, and we'll take a look back at Penn State women's volleyball's weekend wins. Plus, a Penn State legend had a chance to honor his school over the weekend. The Nittany Lions defeated another Big Ten opponent at home. Sports is next. I'm Ron Redden with sports. Penn State hits the road this weekend for a game against Northwestern, and the Nittany Lions are still unbeaten. Some feared a hangover after the Iowa win, but what the Lions showed on Saturday against Indiana was anything but. The game started with Indiana winning the opening coin toss. The Hoosiers elected to kick to Saquon Barkley, which was a bad idea. Barkley took the opening kickoff 98 yards for a score, making it Penn State's first kickoff return for a touchdown since 2011. Penn State capitalized on great field position in Indiana's turnovers to jump out to a 28 to nothing lead in the second quarter. Penn State's defense held Indiana scoreless in the first quarter. This makes the Nittany Lions the only team left in the country to prevent any first quarter points this season. On a day where Penn State donned retro uniforms to honor previous generations of greatness, it only proved true that some of the greatest to ever wear the blue and white are on this current 2017 team. In the second half, it was only fitting that in a game titled Generations of Greatness, senior wide receiver Deshaun Hamilton was able to etch his name in the Penn State record books. On his seventh reception, he grabbed the all-time receptions record at 180 catches. Hamilton finished the day with 122 receiving yards and three touchdowns. After the game, Coach James Franklin praised his senior wide receiver. I'm really proud. I made a big deal out of it in the locker room with the guys. You know, I think he's a great example for our younger players. I think he's a great example in general. It didn't go unnoticed that the kicking unit for Penn State struggled yet again this week. Tyler Davis had one kick blocked and missed a chip shot from the three-yard line. Coach James Franklin said that it's something the team will fix. I mean, you know, obviously everybody's focused, and I am as well, that we got to get our field goal units cleaned up. This Saturday's game at Northwestern kicks off at noon Eastern time. That'll be 11 a.m. Central time for the boys, and you can listen to the action live on Penn State Com Radio. A Penn State football legend had a chance to honor his school over the weekend. Jack Cam presented the university with a special honor from the NFL. I was able to get out to Pagula Ice Arena for the event. I think every NFL player wants to give back to the, to the university because it, they've done so much for us. The stars were out at Pagula Ice Arena on Friday night as former players and Penn State celebrities came to honor something they had in common with legend Jack Ham. Penn State. The hometown Hall of Famer program honors the roots of Hall of Fame athletes. The ceremony tailored by the Pro Football Hall of Fame awarded Ham with a commemorative plaque. Ham has been a color commentator for Penn State football for the last 18 years. His broadcast partner Steve Jones says having Ham as a co-worker and friend has made his life better. I had my parents tell me a long time ago that you should always work with somebody that can make you better and I can tell you all 18 years He's made me better. Ham let the crowd know that he cherished Penn State for offering him a full scholarship out of high school when other colleges didn't offer him those same opportunities. Penn State, and I think East Carolina offered me $500 a year for books. That was my, so I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but full scholarship here, 500 bucks over here, and going to Penn State. So. It ended up working well for me. And Franco Harris, one of Penn State's greatest running backs, said that describing him in one word is almost impossible. But he said if he had to, he would describe him as this. Boy, it's hard to describe someone in one word. But I would just say this great popped into my mind. Ham and Penn State became the 113th site of the Hometown Hall of Fame induction, and the plaque will be on permanent display on Penn State's campus. From Pagula Ice Arena, Ham said he wants to continue paving the way for future generations of Penn Staters. He and his broadcast partner, Steve Jones, would like to open up more opportunities for students through the Belisario College of Communications. To high school football now, the State College Little Lions are showing the rest of Pennsylvania why they're ranked 25th in the state. They took on the Carlisle Bison looking for their fifth win and their first win in conference play. Blake Friedman reports. 
What started as a beautiful evening for high school football turned into a rainy, one-sided game that no one expected. The Carlisle Bison came into this game looking for their fourth win on the season, but the Little Lions had different plans in mind. With State College's first possession a few minutes into the game, the Little Lions put the ball on the ground and the Bison recovered around the 50-yard line. First possession now for Carlisle and the receiver is able to break away from multiple tackles and finds his way into the end zone for the first score of the game. Now later in the game tied 7-7, State College executes a halfback toss and finds a wide open receiver in the back of the end zone. Later in the first quarter, State College receiver Brandon Clark calls in a big catch here that led to a State College touchdown later in the drive. The rain came down hard during the first half, but Brandon Clark continued to catch the ball and help his team finish the drive with a rushing touchdown by senior tailback Tristan Lyons. Heading into the second half, State College didn't let off the gas, and quarterback Tommy Freeberg finds Tristan Lyons across the middle as he extends the Little Lions' lead to 35 points. State College displayed more explosive offensive plays as sophomore running back Kyle D'Amico follows his blockers and gets himself into the end zone for a 63-7 lead. But the story of the night was senior receiver Brandon Clark, who racked up 101 receiving yards and three touchdowns. State College head coach Matt Lintel says having a playmaker like Clark makes the difference between a good team and a great team. Brandon is a special kid. Uh, he's he very talented, really explosive. Uh, the best ball skills I've ever been around at, at the high school or college level. He's, he's got elite ball skills, really great body control, um, and he's a great captain, great leader for us. From Memorial Field in State College, I'm Blake Friedman for the Center County Report. The Little Lions crushed Carlisle 70-14 and are 1-0 in conference play. State College has a big test this Friday as they take on Cumberland Valley, the 15th best team in the state. Penn State Volleyball is ready to play at Ohio State on Friday after their weekend in Rec Hall. They swept Big Ten opponents, Illinois, and Northwestern in straight sets, making their record 13-1 overall. In the match against Illinois, Penn State dominated the first two sets at the net and won by a combined 14 points. Senior Haley Washington's fiery leadership led the way for the Nittany Lions as the seniors scored 11 kills. Senior Simone Lee also got in on the action as she netted 10 kills herself, maintaining her pace as one of the most dominant hitters in the country. In the third and final set, it was much closer than Rutch Rose would have liked. The Illini pushed the Penn State Nittany Lions to extras and forced the Nittany Lions to win the final set 26-24. to And all of a sudden you're in a match that you thought you had a little better control of. But, you know, Illinois is uh, always a tough team to play. That's all for sports. Now back to you at the Anchor Desk.